for you, Jumble. Jumble yawns and looks away, drumming on his belly with the palms of his hands. Jumble, my questions. Jumble rolls his eyes. He turns to you, smirks, and then bites his thumb. Are you mute? Is that why you won't answer me? Jumble cocks his head and gives you a stupid grin. Slowly, he shrugs, then shuts his eyes and sticks his tongue out at you. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> He's just being what he does, doing random things. Uh, Jumble, what could I do to get you to remove Requin's curse? Jumble pretends to not hear you, instead belching loudly and resuming his belly drumming, his eyes wandering on the fest hall. Is there anything I could do so that you remove Requin's curse? Jumble won't look at you, but shakes his head. Remove Requin's curse, Jumble, before I'm forced to hurt you. Jumble raises one eyebrow and takes a step back. He opens his mouth abruptly and, though his lips or throat don't move to shape any words or sound, a torrent of incomprehensible babbling begins to pour forth. What Updated the? my journal. Jumble shuts his mouth and the babbling ceases. He peers at you through narrowed eyes, a self-satisfied smile on his pudgy face. Suddenly, you hiccup. And hiccup. And hiccup. And hiccup again. Jumble Murder Sense merely turns his head and waves you away. Uh-oh. Looks like you just got a curse thrown down, you, down on you, Chief. What have you done to me, Jumble? Jumble ignores you entirely. I better find someone who helped me lose this curse. <sighs> hiccup! Alright, everyone. I remember this now. Yep. So the rest of the game... I'm gone. We hiccup. I'm gone. <laughs> oh, this curse. Okay. If I remember this very well now, if you... I thought it was a different guy that cursed us. If you... If you kill Jumble, you have this the rest of the game. I don't think death even gets rid of it. So we have to find a way to purge this curse. And thankfully... Just outside is someone who's good at curses. Ugh. You see Salabesh the Onyx. He makes a brief, brief but graceful half bow. <clears throat> Again, you stand before me. A question for you, Salabesh. About what? Huh? Not the ward and the like, I hope. You're a master of curses. Perhaps you could hang up. Help me. I, I can't actually make the hiccup sound. And it would, you guys would find it annoying if I did so, I think. Help you, Slava sneers. Doubtful. Before he can respond, he sighs, shaking his head. Well, perhaps I could. What troubles you, then? Jumble Murder Sense cursed me. Jumble Murder Sense? <laughs> that sporting boot cap could never vest me. Oh, the battles we used to have, though. Slava frowns. But I'm past all that now. I no longer my sort of thing, you see. I really don't know what I could do for you. After all, it's his curse. Not the sort of thing you'd find on an item or some such, you know. Yeah, you'd have to remove with a simple magic. He'll have to remove it. And willingly. Could you teach me a curse, then? That I could use on him? Pick up. Hmm. Huh. Well, I don't normally do that. I keep my curses to myself, you know. And besides, even a single curse would take one long, long while to learn. More time than I'd care to spend on. I could pay you for your trouble. No, no. I simply no desire to do it. So much looks directly into your eyes. Now kindly drop the subject, Sarah. Before you begin to annoy me. Oh, that's understandable. Hiccup. Perhaps you're just worried your curses aren't good enough to best him anymore. You... Oh, all the ridiculous. Now look here, you knuckle-dragging sack of scars. Salabash the Onyx is the master of curses. And there is no other. Why, I could give you but a single phrase that would render the, that nincompoop's cursing wholly impotent. Purse your lips. Look skeptical. That's it? You've made me do it! Salabash utters a short string of impossible syllables. Words of power, which you note mentally for later use against Jumble. So I cursed a mouthy cow. Oh, he's saying he's fucked up there. There. See what that does to him. And tell me Salabash the Onyx isn't the master of curses, then. Thanks, Salabash. I'll do that. Farewell. Updated my journal. <laughs> that was gone. great. Purse your lips look skeptical. Uh, oh, that is so annoying. What a uh, wonderful curse. Oh, man. Could you imagine having hiccups dumb. and not being able to kill yourself? That would drive... 
<laughs> I'm sorry. The only way to get rid of them would be to kill yourself, I suppose. That would drive me nuts not being able to get rid of them. I'm gone. I think like two days of it. That'd be all I could stand before I want to throw myself off a bridge. Jumble. Come on, I'm gonna give you one more chance to remove this naturally. It'll make me endure. Your will be right. done. It'll make me do this to you. Jumble frowns at your appearance, biting his thumb at your direction and waving you away. Jumble, I need you to remove the curse you put on me. He rolls his eyes and yawns pointedly. All right, throw the curse Salabash taught you, Adam. Jumble stares at you with a somewhat skeptical expression as you speak the arcane syllables of Salabash's curse. After a moment of awkward silence, the Zetosec mage notes that nothing seems to have happened. An evil grin spreads across his face. He opens his mouth to retaliate with another curse of his own, only to realize he has no voice. Salabash's curse has removed Jumble's ability to speak, thereby destroying the Zetosec's ability to curse others. He clutches at his throat, panic welling up in his eyes. Looks like the tables are turned, Jumble. What do you think will happen when hit anyone you've ever cursed finds out you can't speak or curse anymore? Jumble drops to his knees, a pleading expression in his eyes. He looks ready to burst into tears. Will you remove the curse you placed on me and, I s and swear never to curse another who didn't mean you harm? Jumble places his hands over his heart and nods vigorously. Very well. I'll remove the curse then. Updated my journal. Jumble sighs with relief as you remove Salabach's curse from him. He, in turn, removes his own, and your hiccups finally stop. He then bows humbly and casts his eyes to the floor. Jumble, I'd still like you to take your curse off Requind if you could. Updated my journal. Jumble nods, pouting, and with a wave of his hand, removes Requind's curse. Thank you, Jumble. Farewell. Oh, thank God. Was that so hard, Jumble? I'm gone. <laughs> Poor Requin's been that way forever, but he's, I guess, he just doesn't care. Wow. All right. We got a lot more experience. Did we level up? I didn't think I heard anyone level up. We did not. Wow, we need another less than 10,000, so we need another 40,000 or so to level up again. And we will be the first people to do so, it looks like. Oh, is this Merriman? All right. Is that Merriman? Wow. He's an... He's an old chap. This man looks like a bitter, cantankerous old conjurer. His mouth is twisted into a frown that becomes even more severe as he notices you coming his way. Merriman my name may be, but merry I am not. Off with you, young one. No time for the likes of you. He goes into a fit of coughing from the exertion of shooting you away so loudly. Wait! Dolor wanted me to speak with you. Merriman eyes you suspiciously. That's so. About what, eh? Hmm? Well, she says that you're her first love, and that so long as you hold the keys to her heart, she'll never be free to love another. She told you that, eh? I'm surprised. Perhaps leaving her under Mistress Grace's tutelage did what I couldn't. Started to develop her feelings. In any case, he pats a pocket on his tunic. I won't just give the keys to you. Wait. Those are literally the keys to her heart? He nods. That they are. The lore is a construct. Didn't you know that? A creature of sorcery and clockwork mechanics she is. And one of my finest creations. A cold, without emotion or character. I brought her to the brothel and set her there so that she could not leave in the hopes that the con constant contact with so many others would begin to develop her personality. The keys are the tools used to set her. She wants them because she feels that they're limiting her personal growth now, I suspect. Then why don't you just return the keys to her? Merriman scowls. Because I've become cruel and bitter old man who sees he can get something out of you. <laughs> Fine. Go on then. What do you want? I want... I want... To forget. I lived almost 150 years now. And I've seen every sensory stone I've cared to in this grand hall. I have little time left to live. And I'm too weak to go out in search of wholly new experiences. So I need a way to forget them all. That way, I can start again in my final days. So, do I just wallop you in the back of the head? Updated or... my journal. No, you bloodthirsty lummox. I'll need something, some item, some concoction. That will allow me to forget. Like a draught of the river Styx. Something like that. Right. I know what to do, Merriman. I'll return. Well... Done. Do you remember 
those ice shards in the museum. Done. Hmm. I don't think we can just take them. However, there was a mage drinking with a frosty mug. We might be able to persuade him to part with it. And if we can, then we might be able to use that to catch one of those birds of ice. If not, I know there's one in the curiosity shop, so we can always stop by there if we if we so wish. Yeah, so this part of the game reminds me very much of like a point-click adventure. Like you, you need to find these items to unlock this part of the quest, which then requires these items, this and this and this combined to do this thing. And again, once I once I'm done with what I'm about to do here, the rest of it will be new to me. Other than a little bit of under uh, down below, which I remember it being very difficult to do. But I don't remember what was actually in it, other than some horrible, like, slug creatures. And I think I remember some sort of resettable maze. I believe we have to purchase the Modron at the Curiosity Shop to unlock that. And we will, we will do that a little bit later. Is this the mage? Oh, this is him. Got, got the staff. This older man is staring to the stain. Alright, so, what's that mug you've got? This? He looks down at the pewter. Okay, so it's enchanted, it's freezing cold. Oh, okay, so we don't have the option to do anything about that. All right. Can we, can we pick his pocket, I wonder? I don't really want to do that. I don't want to hurt him either. Picking the pocket might work, but I have never attempted that before. All right. I don't. I don't think I did. I don't remember ever making that. I, I, I've never actually picked anyone's pocket, which is one of the reasons why I'm trying to up on his pickpocket skills. I want it up to 80, and then I'll actually I'm be gone. attempting to pick people's pockets. But I guess we'll go buy the mug. It wasn't too expensive, and we have a, a thousand Damn. something coppers left. I, I know I mentioned it before, but the sound effects in this game are simply amazing. I'm they gone. did a great job making it sound like, you know, kill the conversation. It's like you're walking in a busy section of a city where everyone's, like, lounging around, watching watching street shows or what have you. All right, so I'm interested in purchasing. Uh, doo -doo -doo. The room covered Aelstein. An ale mug of unusual manufacturer, which keeps its contents, usually beer of course, icy cold, whatever the surrounding temperature, 299 copper commons, and you'll enjoy the frostiest ale you've ever had outside par the power plane of ice. I'll take it. Farewell. All right, we're, we're running low on, well, we're not running low, but we're getting a little, we're getting to the point where I'm not too comfortable spending a lot of money anymore. Done. I like having uh, over 1,200 copper commons, and we're I'm gone. rapidly approaching the point where I will not feel comfortable that I can just bribe people I'm gone. and have you. All right. All right, so now we got to go back and talk to Merriman again. Let me think, is there anything else? So let me talk about what else I remember, because, again, we're approaching the end of it. So, yeah, we're right at the very end, everyone, of what I've done. Once I get this Aelstein... And I think we'll go get the the iceberg using it. What else is there for me to do? Well, what, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of what else I've done. The the one crazy maze with that I've done, I believe that takes that requires the Modron from the Curiosity Shop, and I believe we're able to farm that area. I seem to remember doing it multiple times, and we'll be able to. If you're into, like, I don't plan to do the farming on screen. Or do very much right. of it. But I will probably try the dungeon once or twice. Just to... I'll do it once on screen. And then if it's repeatable, I'll do it again. And I think... Yes! Yep. There is a character we can get in that... In that maze somewhere as well to join our party. Yes. Yep, I'm positive of it. I even... I, I, 
I know who it is. Oh, it's gonna be awesome. And that will be it. When it comes to story stuff, I've actually not done anything else. Like, whatever's happening in these... in these places Dumb. here. Oh, wait. What am I doing? We went the totally wrong way. We gotta go to the museum. Everything else, like, well, any story-related stuff, I have never... Oh, i never done... Fiendling. I see the way you look at the chief. Nothing to be ashamed of. Why don't you say something? Never tell him how I feel. Nor shall you prattle on to him about it. He's a mark of doom on him. I'll not swim from his path. Hear me, Skull? All right, all right. Calm down. Sheesh. Oh, Anna. You have a crush on the nameless one. Or you like I'm him, gone. at least. I don't know if that would work out. She's got... I don't know if that would work out. The way we're playing our nameless Dumb. one and Anna, I don't think that would work out. She's too feisty. Oh, I want the museum. I'm gonna get right. walking around it. And now we can pretend some time has passed, so I can, if Yvonne is here, I can ask how her meeting with her daughter went. I can't believe that they didn't, like, that was the whole reason they stopped talking. Dumb. Okay, so. We're going to catch one of these in the frost-covered ale mug. You dip the mug into the icy wind rising from the pedestal, catching a small shard with a slight clang. Came into the mug, you can see the dark bird is razor-sharp sliver of ice, a, a black ice. Only the mug's magical properties prevent the shard from melting away to nothing. I'm While gone. we're here, we'll ask her how her meeting went, assuming that we're able to do so. Hey, Ivana. Oh, um. Okay, we couldn't ask it. I, I never did that before. It only, uh, only recently, like when I just did that quest, did I re actually remember that her mother was here. I've never actually told the mom about Eve's and my other times playing the game. That is the fiend's tongue, and this is the Aelstein. Uh, that that Aelstein? Done. <laughs> okay, let's get let's get back in here. That was interesting before because I I just kind of like immediately teleported out of the place. I wonder how I did that. Oh, that's right. We can run. <laughs> I always forget. I always forget we can run. I uh. Yes. All right. I, I forgot. <laughs> wow. All right. <laughs> well, normally I would cut the part out, but I'm gone. We were talking about stuff, and only now am I have, I'm, am I out of things to talk about. Here you are, sir. Merriman squints up at you. Well, have you something that will wipe my mind of these accursed memories? I certainly hope you haven't returned without. You'll never get the keys to Dolly. Dolores' heart that way. Here, take this mug. It holds a dark bird of Ocanthus, a sliver of ice from the river Styx. It should wipe your memories clean. Merwin takes the mug and removes a piece of paper from his pocket. He tilts the mug back and takes the ice into his mouth. It melts instantly, leaving him with a somewhat startled expression. Merriman Updated my journal. Merriman looks at you, confused, then at the paper in his hands. He reads aloud. Congratulations, Merriman. You've begun again. Thank the man in front of you and give him the key in your pocket. Speak to Splinter, the man at the door to this building, for more information. He looks to you again. Well, it would seem you I owe you thanks, good sir. Here, take this key. I'd best find this Splinter fellow and find out what's going on. Thanks, Merriman. Good luck. All right. He went the wrong way. Oh, that must be the spellcasting area. I'm gone. I hear the fighter. That must be this area. So this, this must be the thief, the thief spot. I'm gone. The, uh, the training rooms are in that hallway. This just looks like some sort of general conference area. We'll talk to everyone in here uh, later. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this stuff first, and then I'm going to see if I have enough cash to purchase the Modron. If not, I might do under down below, but that will be difficult. I remember it being very tough. 
Alright, so we have the keys to Dolores' heart. We can turn those in. And ask her about Echo. We also have the tongue for Echo as well. Oh, and is this her? No, that's Kesai, Saris. Your will be done. Where is Delora? Done. There's many. Oh, she shut, she shuts the doors to the places that she... Done. Oh, oh what's the word, in... Chief? Oh, well, I'm there she is. All right. That was weird. Done. She, oh, she shut the door. Oh, she's in her room. This is her room. Dolores' eyes flash as he sees you. Did you find him? Has he agreed to return the keys to my heart? Yes. I have the keys to your heart. Here they are. Updated my journal. At last. She takes the keys from your grasp. Her hand brushes against yours. Her skin is dry, but icy to the touch, like cold metal. These will be of great use to me. I thank you. Of course, Delora. I had a question for you. Of course. I will answer what I can. I was hoping to learn more of your nature. Delora blinks. Merriman never told me much regarding my construction. I know little of the inner workings of my body, much as you likely know little of yours. Outwardly, though, I am a human woman in all respects, save for the texture and temperature of my flesh. Does that satisfy your curiosity? What about your mind, your emotions? Its functions are as such, are as much a mystery to me as any human's. When I first came to this place, I did not understand emotions, nor have any of my own. I have feelings now though, I am only beginning to understand them. And what do the keys do? I can only assume that Merriman made the keys so that there would be no risk of me drawing away from him before he had tired of his experiment. Now that they are in my possession, I am free to develop and possess my own emotions. Okay. What can you tell me about the silent prostitute? Updated my journal. Yes, her name is Echo. Her voice, and in fact, her every means of communication, was stolen and destroyed. Echo's words once wooed away the paramour of a godling, Paramisha. Paramisha, in a jealous rage, tore away Echo's voice, sealed it within a crystal vial, and then hurled it into a... Mig... Into a horrible creature's maw. How do you pronounce that? Megogalamadragas? Echo's voice is forever lost to her. Only another, new voice could return to her the ability to communicate once more. I know this because I spoke to the Paramisha's paramour myself once. Wow. Do you know anything about Ravel Puzzlewell? I know that she was, or is, should she still be numbered among the living, a night hack of great power and inestimable evil. The Lady of Pain banished her to an extra-dimensional prison for crimes against the city of Sigil. You would do well to speak to Eves of her. She knows a great many tales, and can likely tell you ravels. I feel stronger. Nice. <laughs> Alright, let's level up. Level 9 Mage, we get a characteristic point and 10 hit points. Intelligence. Definitely one more point there. Then I'll probably put one into Charisma, one into Dex, and then we're gonna... I guess then we'll figure out what I'm doing after that. Like, I don't know... I don't know what the maximum level is of this game, but I know we have level 9 spells. That would make, like, level 18 the highest rank. I'll probably end up putting points in Strength and Constitution soon. All right. Let's go to our spells and see what we can memorize. Oh, only one fifth level spell. We have Code of Cold, so we must have picked that. 
believe that's it. I mean, that's still very nice. Yeah. All right. Okay, well, so let's... Let's do one more thing. Good as done. Might as well. Let's take a look at Dakon's... Circle. And see if there's another one here. I'm curious if there is a eighth circle. Oh, yep. Now we get an exam now we can examine it again. Wow, how many of these are there? As you examine the rings of the seven circles of Xerthamon, you suddenly become aware of a pattern in the way the links are formed. You hook your fingers into the sides of the circle and unlock a hidden segment, pulling the plate forth so you can study it. Know that a mind divided divides the man. The will and the hand must be as one. In knowing the self, one becomes strong. Continue reading the circle the symbols. Know that if you know a course of action to be true in your heart, do not betray it because the path leads to hardship. Know that without suffering, the rising would never have been, and the people would never have come to know themselves. Know that there is nothing in all the worlds that can stand against unity. When all know a single purpose, when all hands are guided by one will, and all act with the same intent, the planes themselves may be moved. A divided mind is one that does not know itself. When it is divided, it cleaves the body in two. When one has a single purpose, the body is strengthened. In knowing the self, grow strong. Done. Wow. I guess for Dakon, this must mean that if he... He's going to have to follow whatever his heart tells him. He has to come up with an idea of what Xerthamon means to him. And that means abandoning... Xerthamon's religion because he doesn't believe it, then so be it. That's what, what he should be doing. Will? There are some things I would know, Dakon. Can I talk to you about your teachings? Dakon waits. I have read the unbroken circle of Xerthamon. I want to speak to you more about the way of Xerthamon. What did you come to know? There was an eighth circle within the stone of Xerthamon. It spoke of the vision of the mind and the importance of focus. Dakon falls silent. When he speaks again, his tone is quiet, almost reverent. What does the Eighth Circle speak of? It speaks of focus and discipline, about how not knowing oneself can physically divide the man. It also speaks of the weaknesses that division causes. It seems to me that it tells one to not only know themselves and take strength from that, but that your focus can reveal weaknesses in your enemy. That kind of silent for a moment. Will you make this circle known to me? Take the unbroken circle of Zerthamon and unlock the eighth circle. Whoa! As you take the circle and twist the, the links, two more plates slide from the interior and into your hands. As with the seventh circle, you have no idea where they came from, but the unbroken circle still seems intact. The eighth circle remains. That Khan watches you closely. There are two plates here. We should both study them, you and I. I think when you know the eighth circle, perhaps then you will know Xerthamon's heart when he made the pronouncement of two skies. His words were not those of the Illithids of the people. Dakon stares at the plates, his eyes flickering over the geometries upon them, then looks up and matches your gaze. His blade bends, shifts, until the shivering you noticed before has become a silver glow. He seems stronger somehow. In knowing the teachings of Xerthamon, I have become stronger. Holy crap! Know that when death comes for you, know that I shall meet its blade with mine. Know that when all dies around you, 
No, I shall live for your sake. When we die, Dakon, it shall be the same death. It shall be the pronouncement of two deaths as one. Updated my journal. Holy crap! Wow! That was freaking awesome! I've never done that before. That was incredible. I hear your words. <laughs> wow, holy crap. Uh, right. So Dakon does a crazy amount of damage and has a fantastic armor class. And his constitution now grants him four hit points per fighter level up. And he gained a spell level here now. And he's very close to leveling his fighter as well. Well, I don't know how useful this spell is to him anymore. He's got a strength of 20. I think the only difference is two points of maximum damage. I think I want a different spell now instead, unless can this... Nope, and strength is only strength eight, uh, 19. We'll still take that anyway. Oh, what spell did we get? This small round stone... Oh, hold on. I have the spells on me. Xerthamon's Focus. Use one mage as Dakon Nameless One. It's in my spell book. Oh, it does, but we're going to copy it, and then we'll take a look at it. Spell has been added to my teachings. I like Dakon to have all of these spells, because it's very in theme for him. Which then reminds me that we should probably take... That, of course, I. This enchantment helps the target remember Zerthamon's teachings on the way to channel one's mental and physical focus during battle. When cast, the recipient's chances for a critical attack are raised for 5 seconds per level of the caster. As awesome as Ball Lightning is, I really want Zerthamon to have all of his. Strathamon spells. We can always buy another one for me, and he'll probably gain another rank 3 spell maybe the next time he levels. Oh, and he has access to a level 4 spell, and we don't have any for him, so we'll have to fix that in the future as well. Alright, let's stop here, everyone. Wow, holy crap. Oh, wait, no, not yet. I want to talk to Eves and see what happened to her. I haven't done this. This is awesome! This is all new! <laughs> this is... Thank you, everyone. Uh... I'm sorry. I am I am really happy. Today is the day where I have made progress in Planescape Torment after years of possessing and owning and playing this game and restarting over and over and over again. But I'm finally seeing some new things. I guess I should be a sensate, right? Let's talk to, to Eves and see if she's learned anything. Eve smiles pleasantly at you. Greetings again. Have you come to trade tales? I have a question for you. Have you spoken to your mother lately, Eves? He smiled, nod, smiling. I have. Thank you. My pleasure. I had another question for you. Aww. Good. I'm glad to see that they're talking to each other again. Um, Alright, so let's let's trade one more tale with her. Let's tell her the story of Ignis. Eve leans forward as you tell the tale of Ignis and the art that burned within him. She seemed to devour your every word. As you finish, she smiles at you. I shall remember this tale. And now I have one for you. The Execution. Once, a murderer roamed Sigil Streets, a black-hearted man by the name of Cossacks. He had been blessed by his abyssal mother so that no one could strike him with an intent to harm, or they themselves would die. He reveled in his blessing, using it to start fights and murder anyone who crossed his path. During one of his murderous rages, he was captured by the Harmonium with nets and brought before the governors. The trial was short, final, yet Cossacks laughed at the proceedings, knowing that no one among them could harm him without dying horribly. At the final days of his trial, he was proclaimed guilty and sentenced to death. Cossacks' sentence proclaimed by the governors was this, Confinement for thrice thirty days, during which time you shall give up your life, be declared dead, and your body be moved when all signs of life cease. Cossacks laughed and dared any of them to try to harm him. Yet the court was silent. The mercy killers led Cossacks to their prison and locked him in a dark, empty cell. There was no cot, no lights, and the only door was a steel grate in the ceiling. 
As they lowered him into the cell, the Mercy Killers told him, In the corner of your cell will you find the chalice. It holds poison. Your death will be swift. Aren't you going to execute me? Cossack snarled at the guard. No one in Sigil shall lay a hand on you with intent to harm, came the Mercy Killer's reply. Then I spit on your cowardice, Cossack laughed, feeling for the chalice in the darkness, then hurling it at the wall and shattering it. Its poison dripped from the walls and dried until it was no more. Come then! You will have to try to kill me now! But there was no response. From the grate in the ceiling, it was then that Cossacks noticed the cell had no cot, no lights, and no food and water. All that remained was a shattered chalice, the poison gone, and for the first time, Cossacks knew the icy touch of death's approach. In twice thirty days, the grate opened, and Cossacks' bodies, now cold, was taken from the cell. It had given up its life, and the execution had been carried out. Thank you, Eves. Farewell. All right, well, when we return, we will talk to Echo and give her the tongue. We'll then probably talk to Eve a little more and we'll get more stories from my companions uh, told and, and get a little bit more experience that way. And then we'll, well, I guess we'll explore maybe some of, uh, down below or we'll start exploring the Sensate Halls. I wouldn't mind also getting that Modron figure from Vrishrika. So we might attempt that as well. So I'll see you guys then. Thank you for watching, and take care.